There was speculation that Donald Trump would issue quite a few pardons to his friends and allies on his last full day as president. And he did fulfill people's speculation by doing just that. So Donald Trump issued dozens of pardons late last night. But what might be as noteworthy as who he pardoned is who he actually refused to pardon. So as we know, Donald Trump was threatening in some ways to do preemptive pardons pardons for himself and his family, he did not do that. And there were other notable pardons that people were hoping for that he did not grant. Now before we get to those though, let's talk about some of the shady figures he did in fact pardon. So Trump pardoned former chief strategist Steve Bannon in the final hours of his White House term as part of a flurry of clemency action that benefited more than 140 people, including rap performers, ex-members of Congress, and other allies of him and his family. Now later in the show, we'll do a dedicated story to the Bannon aspect of this. But for the purposes of this more generalized story, I'm gonna do a you know rundown of some of the more notable pardons and people he refused to pardon. So Lil Wayne, a rapper, was one of the individuals he decided to issue a pardon for. Kodak Black is another rapper that he did the same for. Lil Wayne was actually arrested in 2019 after authorities searched his private jet and found among Wayne's possessions was a gold plated pearl gripped 45 caliber Glock ammunition and drugs including cocaine, heroin, MDMA, prescription strength cough syrup and painkillers. As a convicted felon, Wayne is barred from possessing Possessing a firearm, he said the gun was a gift. Now, um, you know, he hadn't actually been sentenced to anything yet. Uh, so he started, uh, he, the, he had these charges filed in 2019, but he won't have to deal with the charges anymore since he's been pardoned uh, by Donald Trump. Prior to the election, he put out some complimentary tweets uh, toward Donald Trump, and I guess he got what he wanted as a result. Um, and Kodak Black was also uh, already serving some time behind bars for uh, gun charges. Now, Trump also pardoned a bunch of corrupt politicians, something that he has quite a bit of experience with. So let me just go through this and then Jenk, I'll get your thoughts. One pardon recipient was Elliot Brody, a prominent Republican fundraiser who pleaded guilty last fall in a scheme to lobby the Trump administration to drop an investigation into the looting of a Malaysian wealth fund. Another was Ken Krusen, a friend of Trump's, of Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner, who was charged last October with cyber stalking during a heated divorce. Super classy to give that guy a pardon. Also, Trump granted clemency to Rick Renzi of Arizona, who was convicted of extortion, campaign finance violations, and money laundering. Robin Hayes of North Carolina, who was connected to a plot to bribe the state insurance commissioner. And Duke Cunningham of California, who received more than $2 million in bribes. My guess is their crimes really hit close to home for Donald Trump. He probably doesn't see the criminality in what they engaged in. So of course, he's gonna go ahead and give them pardons. Okay, so first, let me just say that some of these pardons are a little savvy politically. And then I'll tell you what I think is the worst of the worst. So he also pardoned co-founder of Death Row Records, Michael Harry O'Harris. And Snoop Dogg came out today and was thrilled about that. Uh, he was uh, in prison for attempted murder and drug trafficking. I, I have no idea what these, you know, the the relative guilt of a, of any of these folks. But that's a little savvy, as we talked about during the inauguration coverage, because it that does reach people. The rappers are famous; people know famous folks way better. They see it in a headline, and and it uh, unfortunately. Um, it tricks some people into thinking that Trump is not racist. And now the real reason he did it is because they're celebrities and they're wealthy, so he relates to them. And he thinks maybe they might be able to do me some good later, okay? Now the most politically savvy one, it was his um, uh, action on Kwame Kilpatrick, who's a former Detroit mayor who was in prison for corruption on a 28 year sentence. He's a Democrat, so why did Trump do that? Because he wants to free anyone on corruption charges who's a politician. So you get a little bit of credit from the African American community, but not much. No, this again, it's just a headline, right? Most people can't stand Kilpatrick because he was corrupt. They don't care what his race was, and that includes the overwhelming majority of Democrats and African Americans. But 
Uh, he's basically saying here, anyone who is corrupt, I'm in favor of. Now let's note for the record, he got elected because he said drain the swamp. So at the, the very last thing he does is the most corrupt politicians in America, he releases them out of prison like Bane in, in, in Batman. And so it, it was the most swamp thing you could possibly do. Now the worst of the worst. Uh, Randall Duke Cunningham, who took uh, served eight years for bribery. There is no reason to pre to, in hindsight, pardon that guy, other than the fact that you love corrupt politicians. He 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 admitted it. There was overwhelming evidence. He cried going into jail. Oh, I found Jesus! Oh my God! And he threw a duffel bag full of money out of his car on the way to the press conference where he pretended to find Jesus. He threw it in his wife's uh, yard as part of the attempt to money launder the bribes that he took. And Trump looks at that and goes, that's my boy. You're my boy, Duke, okay? And then finally, Elliot Broidy, that, this is a scandal that should never leave Trump. Do you remember who Broidy was? He's the guy who paid off one of Donald Trump's mistresses. He, he, he gave that porn star $1.6 million, not Stormy Daniels, it was a different one. So he paid off Trump's porn star. Then he went and asked Trump for a favor and Prosecutors found out and convicted him. It was not only Malaysians, but also a Chinese security official that had bribed Broidy, which he again, he admitted. And and in October, he took a plea deal and forfeited $6.6 million. He'd already gotten paid $9 million overall. And they said, if you can get this Chinese dissident back to China, where he will be persecuted and who knows, maybe even killed. We'll give you a bonus of $80 million. And so this bribery scandal involving, as the Trump people would say, the Chinese Communist Party. And a guy who not only was a deputy finance chair of the Republican National Committee, Broidy was, but had given Trump millions of dollars, including the 1.6 million that is a crime in and of itself to one of his mistresses. And he pardons them. Because he thinks, oh, you were going to bribe me, and you did bribe me. Well, why would I have you go to jail for bribing me? We're co-conspirators. And so, if you think that Trump still wanted to drain the swamp, you are a moron of the highest order. That he he loves the swamp. He loves corruption. He, he is, is the swamp. He is the swamp. He exploited and took advantage of money in politics. His entire adult life, he bragged about it on the debate stage in 2016. And people thought, "Oh no, I mean, he's calling it out. So that must mean that he wants to do something to root out corruption and bribery in politics. I mean, like the nonstop naive behavior from people in this country in response to Donald Trump and what he was allegedly gonna do to really change this system. And also like the thing that's been frustrating is those same people remaining defiant, like their unwillingness to acknowledge that Trump has been awful and did not actually follow through on some of his you know, rhetoric, some of his proposals, some of his promises in 2016, promises that allegedly made him better than Hillary Clinton. As I've said before, I'll say it again, Donald Trump took neoliberalism and injected it with steroids and somehow, somehow, he is not, not held accountable to the same extent as other awful presidents in the past, like George Bush. I'm not saying to in any way rehabilitate George Bush's reputation, but or to rehabilitate some of Obama's foreign policy decisions, including his drone strikes. But if you're gonna criticize Obama for drone strikes, you also have to acknowledge the fact that Donald Trump did an unprecedented number of drone strikes, far more than even Obama did. I'm saying this because in every single area that we care about, whether it's corruption, bribery, foreign policy, economic policies that further drive this giant divide between the rich and the poor in the country, Donald Trump engaged in all of that from the wrong viewpoint, from the wrong policy proposals, and he should be held accountable for that. And yes, of course, he's gonna go ahead and pardon his cronies and people that he can relate to. It makes me think of what you say all the time, Jenk, when it comes to judges who pass down incredibly light sentences for young white men who have gotten caught raping women. They'll look at them and say, no, no, 
know, he's, he's like me, so who cares? Let me let him off easy. That's what Trump does with criminals who engage in bribery and corruption. And plus, among he wants other to criminality. Yeah, plus he wants to set a precedent for letting go of corrupt politicians like himself. And finally, Anna, you want to talk about a neoliberal? Let's also mention who he did not pardon. Yes. Uh, Julian yeah. Assange, reality winner, and uh, Edward Snowden. None of them got a pardon. All the crooks got a pardon, but Snowden and the others, they held a powerful accountable and told us about their lies. Both the right wing and the left wing wanted them uh, pardoned. But Trump has no principles. He looked at him and go, oh, they look kind of honest. Oh, and they let people know that they, about the corruption of the powerful? No way, no, let him rot in jail or let him stay in Russia or wherever they are. Uh, no, I'm only gonna pardon the crooks. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.